Ooh, mm-hmm. yeah, you like that? That was a trick. Yeah. Welcome back to the Movement is Medicine podcast. Dr. Gene Chirakabrod here with Dr. Megan Weezer. Dr. Corey just needs to stay in his seat. How? I'm like trapped. <laughs> I have this here and then this cable that I'm not allowed to touch this time. Yes. So I You're can't. You're not allowed to touch it? No, because the sound was so horrible on his channel the last podcast. Like it, I spent X amount of time editing the podcast and twice as much time trying to save his sound. Well, apparently there this button on here. I'm not. It's not a button. Not, it is a button. It's a trigger that I'm not supposed to touch. You have one too. You can press yours. Don't press it. Where? That one? I'm not touching that. <laughs> See? <laughs> See? Uh, so my apologies to all of the listeners at home that could not hear my wonderful input. They heard mm-hmm. it. It just didn't sound great. Um, on the video one that just went out, or on yeah, the audio? Well, one? it's going to be the same audio. Mm. So. Oh, that's fine. Thanks. Yeah, because I worked my ass off. Thank you, Megan, <laughs> <laughs> to get it to sound decent. Um, got a lot of feedback after the last episode, obviously. You did? Yes. Um, I got a lot of messages, people asking how they can help you based on what happened to you. Um, rewind time. Hmm? Uh, nothing. <laughs> so I said, <laughs> I said rewind time. Yeah, that's. That'd be good. Um, I've told people that... Turn back time. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you for that. How How exactly? How did we unlock that feature of Corey (laughs) Howe? I love it. I'm really good at song lyrics. (laughs) Um... I'm so I am so happy we were recording when that happened. (laughs) I can't. So we... (laughs) We, um, what I've told people is that you're still in the process of <laughs> figuring things out. Once things are figured out, we will put something out there to, to get <laughs> everything figured out and help you out well, in some way. Well, thank you guys. It's um, not fun. No, it, it never so is. It was like a few months long, uh, I don't know what to call it. Awfulness. Yeah. And it's only been two trauma. weeks. Yeah. Trauma. Yeah, I guess. Um, well, um, I know there, there's many, many members in the community that are aching, itching to help. And, um, we'll, we'll get that figured out once you have more details. Well, I appreciate that, guys. So if you, if you don't know what I'm talking about, you can listen to the previous podcast uh, where Megan breaks down the scam that she was um, a victim of. Um, so I was switching gears to, to this episode. Uh, we're... we're into 2023, not 2013. Yes. And um, like we, we talked a little bit about that, you know, resolutions when Jim was on the, well, no, on the podcast, but like as people get more and more into January and into February and start to forget about all the motivational factors um, that they were asking us about earlier in the year, there's still like things that linger around. Like people always they always want a way to motivate themselves, right? They always want to find something that gets them to the end goal, but mm-hmm. it's not always, um, not always the boring things that are proven. So I was, um, I was over at our friend's house over the weekend, um, Dan, Dan Richmond. Mm-hmm. And, um, it was funny. I was, I was talking to somebody about this in class yesterday. They were like, you have friends? <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, well, I have people that tolerate me for prolonged periods. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's kind, of, that's kind of like a friend, right? I think Jamie has friends and you just show up. Um, sure. I mean, <laughs> I'm not picky. Uh, they I'm to- not picky. <laughs> they, t- they tolerate me. <clears throat> but Dan um, Dan was watching Limitless with Chris Hemsworth. Have you seen that? No. Was it a movie? No, it's a mini series on... Uh, uh, I think oh, it's I know what you're Plus. talking about. Um, yeah, when you first said Limitless, I was thinking the movie with Bradley Cooper. Right. Um, but I know what you're talking about. And yeah. like, so on that show, he, um, well, like the premise is apparently he found out he's, he's like predisposed to Alzheimer's, uh, cause he has some family gene that makes mm-hmm. him more likely to have it. So he's like going through different health and wellness things to try to get himself even healthier. So Dan was like, Hey, he's doing the, um, like the cold version. Like he goes like through fasting, through cold 
and like he like, does different things. Like cold exposure, is that what you're saying? Immersion, expo- yeah. exposure, yeah, just using cold. <clears throat> so Dan was like, is there any validity to this? I what, think actually there is to the cold exposure. Yeah, which there's got, a lot of Which got me thinking, we'll, 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 we'll talk about this uh, in a second, but... I don't want there to be. Yeah, it's not, you know what it's I mean? not fun. Like, I will argue that no matter what data comes out about it. Yeah. <laughs> like, You'll argue that you don't want to do it? Uh, yeah, yeah, like, if, no, I'm not doing that. But I think there actually is some data for uh, recovery purposes or something with right. with cold. Um, so the, 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 the premise in the show was it, inflammaging is what they called it. Inflammaging? Inflammaging. Right, it's, it's a process of the cells kind of building up gunk over time, and those cells being aging faster because they have gunk. Um, so it's not quite inflammation, but it's just a, a buildup of cellular debris, essentially metabolites. So he asked me, like, is there any validity to this? And my response was, like you said, possibly. <laughs> possibly. <laughs> Nelly just sighed, like, God. <laughs> more like i'm comfy that was more of a I'm really comfy side she likes my my jacket yeah, you, look like a boy comfy. On. you look so comfy so my response was I mean, for some people sure but like you have to you have to do it for prolonged minutes for prolonged days to months to years like your body needs a lot of time to adapt to it and then maybe there's some some changes and then maybe you might find out in decades like it's not like a short-term change but the point that i made to dan was that these let's call it peripheral adjustments to health people cling to the to the periphery without focusing on the proven things that are in front of them like eating a vegetable sleeping and working out yeah 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 people are like i want to do cold submerging and i'm like and it's like you sleep five hours a day and have mcdonald's seven times a week but it's not even that extreme (laughs) like Like, when is the Thanks for listening. <laughs> We're done. What I wouldn't Shut do it for down. a 10 Burn piece it down. chicken nugget right now. Burn, Burn it down. Uh, but yeah, like people focus on the periphery, but they don't focus on the central aspects. It's because like, those things are cool and new. Like they have a, a draw to them. Like And it's and it implies like a quicker fix. Yeah, it, it's a quick fix. That's it, usually the key for most right. people. That and is not like a habitual change that you have to make. You know what I mean? People always want something that they think will give them the missing element, right? Or like the extra edge when they're not even, like, you're not even in a position to have a edge, let let alone an extra one. There's always this aspect of, like, conspiracy that what the experts don't want you to know, (laughs) right? This miracle. Oh, God, yeah. The the experts, here's, here's the thing. We want you to know things. We want this for you. Like the experts are not hiding anything. We're like no. screaming from the rooftops. They just don't want to accept that the work that you have to put in. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. So um, it, it, is, it is a very interesting episode. Like, so Chris uh, Hemsworth, he goes to the Arctic. And we can call him Thor if we want to, right? Thor. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Chris Thorsworth? Sure. Yeah. Right. Um, so he goes to the Arctic and he so he does like an Arctic swim. It's like a 200 yard swim, but it's like the water is like 37 degrees Fahrenheit. So it's like literally almost freezing. Oh no. That that's pretty much it. I mean, he nope. said it too, cause he's Australian. So his <laughs> body's used to the, to the heat. Um, but he trains for like three days and n- none of it is pleasant. Like n- none of it is pleasant. M- most of the research is like a couple minutes in an ice bath or a cold shower. So like there's contract and like, baths. The level of uncomfortability you have to go through for the level of perceived potential, gain right. or potential gain. Like, yeah, well, screw the, that shit. The medical team is going through with him. He's like, they're like, okay. If you stay in a little bit longer or like, if this you happens, might sleep you, better tonight. Like, no, no, no. They're I, like, you might die. So oh. he's like sitting there going like you could see the the wheels start turning in his head. He's like, okay, so I'm doing this to live longer. But what you're telling me is I might die. Yeah, doing right. this. So th- there's a law of, of the, at some point the returns. You're like, what is what what are the returns here that I'm putting into into it? Um, there's contrast showers, right? That people do a hot shower, and then they do a cold shower, and they feel better. They feel more energized. And yeah. I think the the science is iffy on what's actually happening. On the cellular difference, it's more, I think, sensory from your, your skin temperature because you are you have so much of your skin on your body, right? Covers, that's the biggest organ you have. So when you have... 
So when you leave. <laughs> that was just a funny sentence. And now I'm watching Nelly peacefully sleep. It's adorable. So when the water hits the biggest organ that you have, and then you go into different temperatures, it gives you a little jolt of energy, uh, but it doesn't necessarily change anything. Yeah. Very similar to stretching. But if it wakes you up in the morning to give you more energy to go work out, that's a good thing. Yeah. yeah. That, or that, whatever. That's, that's the point where I'm headed to. Like with stretching, we say, yes, yeah, stretching is useless, but if it feels good, by all means, go for it and do it with that in mind. Contrast shower is the same thing. If you feel more invigorated and, and you feel better after a 30-second change sure use that go go for it um so i wanted to to ask you guys a twofold question one is what do you think are some kind of periphery things that could supplement or even help with the with the central things and then we'll, we can finish with some of the useless ones that shouldn't even be in people's day-to-day stuff so contrast showers is one yeah like cold exposure um like I guess another thing that comes to mind is people get so hung up on these like little supplements like mm. ashwagandha and like, uh, I don't even know what else, like other like greens powders and, and reds powders and stuff like that. Like it's not necessarily bad for you, but is like, that like fun dip. What's a fun dip? I, I like the, the kind that starts off blue but then turns red when you lick it. Get the man a chicken nugget and call it a day. <laughs> I forgot about fun dip. I, I, I used to love those. I have no yeah. idea what you guys are talking it's, about. It's literally Seriously? a stick of yeah. sugar. Yep. Like pressed into a, it, a, a firm stick. It's so good. Stick. That was my favorite part. The, the, the white the sugar, the stick. sugar stick. Yeah. You take the sugar stick and you dip it in more sugar. That's the fun dip part of it. <laughs> you, wait, you, you lick... You lick the sugar stick first. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. What? <laughs> that makes what? the sugar stick wet. Then you dip the sugar stick in the sugar. What are we talking about out. again? <laughs> and now the sugar stick is coated in sugar. So then you lick the stick again and you have a sugar rush. <laughs> I feel like this is a 50 cent song. <laughs> <laughs> That's magic stick. Oh, oh, oh. But the sugar sometimes was like sour, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, they have all kinds of flavors. <laughs> we could have like a mini segment where I like review candy. <laughs> <laughs> trying to prevent you from diabetes, uh, yeah. not encourage it. Yeah. Oh my God. <sighs> okay. <sighs> so supplements, for sure. That That's that's a biggie. Um, but uh, I mean supplements outside of like the ones who... Uh, you get like a big bang for your buck, like creatine and protein. Like mm-hmm. I take, well, I haven't taken creatine in a while, but like mm-hmm. those are high up there. And like, you can't really argue like the, the downfalls the only ones that have scientific background. Exactly. For them. Yes. Like the only like thing that make a research. significant uh, impact on your goals, but um, other stuff like, like ashwagandha and the, what, like selenium powders or what even mm-hmm. like, just yeah. turmeric like golden lattes and stuff like that like mm-hmm. um yeah and a lot of that is placebo yeah. people well, you're grasping believe. at straws i feel like too to solve a bigger problem yeah you, you, you want <laughs> to believe again that that's the but again those things like i don't think they're useless necessarily are they doing what you think they're doing i don't know i mean like there is some research i think on ashwagandha out there and like the mushroom powders and stuff like that. Like there's there's probably some benefit to that, but um the degree to which you think it is is probably not. And right. like And especially if you don't like, have other like, portions. It's expensive out. as hell. Like you could buy a bunch of frozen veggies and probably get the same, if not better, benefits. Yeah. <clears throat> I I I don't like supplementation. Unless you have blood work done and you see there is an actual deficit in what you're trying to supplement and then you track it and you progress it. Well, the supplements I'm talking about are like, like our bodies don't make ashwagandha. Right. Like, well, that's what I mean. Like you're if, talking if, about something separate like calcium, vitamin D, magnesium, zinc, But et even those things that you're trying to supplement something, right? You, you, you're putting that into your body for more energy yeah. or whatever you think is lacking <clears> to, <throat> to make up for that. So I think unless you know what is actually lacking and what you're deficient in, there's no point in putting it in because you don't know how effective it is. 
I guess what I was thinking was like the perceived superfood powders or whatever, not necessarily like vitamins and mineral supplements. Yeah, but why why do people take them? Because they think they're good for them. And what like what does that mean? What? What does that mean? What do you mean? What does what that is, mean? What is good for them mean? He's trying to prove a point. Right. That they don't really know why they're taking Correct. it. Okay, yeah. All right. So unless you know the reason, unless you start to define kind of the way we started this entire podcast is what is healthy. Yeah. Right. Unless you define that and or have a solid, measures. like I started taking more magnesium and calcium and vitamin D when I was healing from my fractures. Which makes sense because you're <laughs> typically need more of those for bones to heal. Yeah. Um, and, and blood work is so easy to do nowadays. Like it's not. It's fairly cheap too. I've yeah. literally never done it. I don't think I've, yeah. I haven't done it in a very long time. I think I had to when I worked at the hospital, but I think I did during my like undergrad last semester or something weird for my exercise science thing. Yeah. But uh, yeah, uh, I don't get blood work done really. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's very easy to do nowadays. Do you pay for it or is it insurance? Both. Or? Yeah. Yeah. You can get a blood panel done. Um, I think most, e- even not great insurances cover that as part of your physical and most cover oh, really? that 100%. <laughs> Um, so blood work can be done. Oh, that's um, my problem. I haven't gone to the doctor in like eight years. <laughs> that's, that's not really a problem. I mean that. I don't even think I'm exa- exaggerating. Yeah. It was before I was in Indiana. So PT school. So 2016. Yeah. I mean, most primary care time. physicians are so overworked that like your case is, is ideal that you don't need to go. So you shouldn't go. Sure. Um, but I should it, get physicals at some point, I'm guessing. Yeah, but. I think it's once you get like over 35, it's not a bad idea Which to get some close. baseline baseline metrics. Crazy. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I, I think again, if you, if you are saying to yourself, I want to get healthy or healthier, you have to create some objective markers for what that means for your body. And, um, right. I want to get healthy it. is not a concrete goal and there's no way to measure that goal. Right. So whatever you put into your body then is you will want to, you will want to believe that it's helping you. Right, because that's <clears throat> sunken cost fallacy. That the more you, money you spend on something, the more you want to believe it's actually working instead of cutting ties with it. That's why people stay at the same slot machine. Yeah, for exactly. the longest time. Yeah, yeah, yep. It's... Have you guys uh, listened to Andrew Huberman? No, uh, but I've I have. Heard about but his podcasts are like three and a half hours long. They're legit, nobody has time for that shit. They're the legitimate like like college lectures. He is a professor. Yeah, um, I've listened to a few of his shorter ones, and actually, it's funny you say that. This morning, I've started like bookmarking a few. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, super smart dude. So long. Um, yeah, they literally are three hour long college yeah, lectures, essentially. Um, but he talks. He's a neuroscientist, and he talks a lot mm-hmm. about cold exposure mm-hmm. and um, sunlight exposure, early sunlight yeah. exposure for circadian rhythm. Mm-hmm. So you're asking like things that may work and may not work. Um, I think sunlight exposure is probably pretty important. Um, I agree. They, they say that um, consistently viewing sunlight for at least 10 minutes as early as possible in the day, um, like outside, not through a window, will uh, over the course of a few days start to reset your circadian rhythm, whatever that means, and make you more tired at night. So for people who have are having troubles falling asleep at night or sleeping through the night, um, getting that sunlight exposure exposure early on in the day. Um, and actually right before bedtime too, as the sun's setting, it kind of like you see it rise and you see it set and it kind of um, somehow resets your circadian rhythm and gets you more on an appropriate sleep schedule for you. See, that that's the kind of stuff I would love to know. Like how much of it is getting natural sunlight? Is it you just chilling and not doing anything, looking at the sun? Mm-hmm. Like, is it you being outside and having this mindful component that, hey, I'm purposefully looking at the sun, or is it just being outside? Does it? Like, I, the, I would love the, to see the variables that yeah, they control I'm, for. I'm sure he has it. The sunlight is, is important. It helps for uh, forward locomotion as well, if you're actually walking. But the, the differences between walking when it's cloudy and walking when it's not cloudy is, is different, on uh, according to what he was saying. Yeah. Okay. So the sense. sunlight part is important. That'd be interesting to to read those studies. Um, I'm pretty sure he also talked about... Uh, important... Oh, never mind. Go ahead. Important for what? But then you talked about sleep. Yeah, sleep. Sleep. Um, and I think he talked about uh, a study where they measured testosterone, free testosterone in the body before and after cold exposure, and it was like increased by 200% or something crazy. Um, for what duration? 
I don't know. Because I could see it as just being an, an adrenaline response to the mm -hmm. cold, right? That you go into fight or flight mode and your adrenaline spikes. And then when your system's like, oh, you're not dying anymore, I'm going to settle back in. But mm. I, I, I'm also, I mean, the question you have to ask is you, your body is, should not have spikes like that, right? So what is the long-term negative of asking your system to spike adrenaline 200%? And not adrenaline, testosterone. Testosterone. Well, testosterone's from adrenaline. Hmm. Um, I don't think so. Yeah, I don't think so either. That's right. You don't think adrenaline will spike testosterone? That's not what you said. That's not what you said. Ad testosterone's from adrenaline? Yes, that's what you said. So what do you think is happening when you have... They're two separate hormones. Yeah, they're different hormones. Yeah, but I'm pretty sure they work together in unison. They probably do, but your sentence "testosterone comes from adrenaline" is incorrect. <laughs> okay, we will we will fact check that <laughs> and see, see where it comes from. Um, they are two separate hormones. <laughs> where where are they originated from? Uh, we should try to get Andrew Huberman on the podcast because huh. Carrie would fangirl. Uh, yeah, she likes, really? Yeah, yeah, she really likes all all his information. Yeah, I'll I'll send him an email. Um, <laughs> I'm serious. Yeah. I, will. Oh, I thought he was joking. <laughs> I've had a lot of interviews with with sure. I mean, he was on the that. Joe Rogan podcast, so we might have better things to do. Oh but God, I hate Joe Rogan. I've had many He's interviews so with stupid. guys like that. Um, I like him. The I'm an idiot. Joe Rogan. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah I, I fucking hate it. I don't listen to Joe Rogan. He's so stupid. Uh, it's like an immediately. <laughs> he's good. He's good at what he does. Apparently. As soon as a dude tells me he listens to Joe Grove again, I'm like, have a nice day. He is good at what he does, though. He can, he can interview well. Yeah. Yeah, he can interview well, but he mm -hmm. just is very clickbaity, and like takes oh, things what? out of context. Everything which that, spreads misinformation. You're talking about the Lucky Charms thing. I am talking about that, but other stuff too. Yeah. Sorry, what? Never mind. Never mind. <laughs> not, I'm not getting not sucked into that again <laughs> with your magic sticks. Um, <laughs> Do they even still sell fun? It was sugar sticks, by the way. I not magic sticks. Don't care what you say anymore. I'm feeling a little nostalgic. I want some fun dick. All right. Tune in or next Or like week. Dunkaroos. I want, I Ooh, want Dunkaroos. Dunkaroos are good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Okay. Sure. Um, Things I ate as a kid. As a kid? As a kid. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yesterday. <laughs> 30 minutes ago. Um, all right. So cold supplements, um, sunlight. I think sunlight makes sense, right? Yeah. It's, it's just a natural response to being a human, seeing light. And we're, we're, I'm sure there's probably studies in Alaska where, where sunlight is all kinds of different mm -hmm. um, time frames. Uh, they talked about that. Depression, I'm sure. I know, I know yeah, depression is really effective. high. Season of depression. Yeah. People who live in cloudier climates... Um, have a greater response to sunlight because they don't see it as often. Mm. Yeah. So they like adapt sense. to when they see sunlight, they get a, a better benefit from it. Yeah. I mean, so yeah. We, I mean, we well, like every year, as soon as like it's like spring and nice out and the sun's constantly out, I'm like, wow, I didn't realize how depressed I actually was. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, it it's a affects thing. a lot of people. Seasonal effect, seasonal affective disorder. Affective disorder. Yeah. 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 Um, yes, suns. I don't think there's much question what the sun does. I mean, from photosynthesis to to humans, it's and su it literally powers Superman. It, so, most importantly, yeah, yeah. And the closer he gets, the more power he gets. Yeah, so um, critical. Mm -hmm. Really, you you saved yourself from the magic sticks with that one. <laughs> <laughs> you rebounded. Um, well, let, let's um, let's finish out then. Let, let's talk a little bit more about eating. Um, the other one that uh, Chris Hemsworth did on that show is fasting. And I think fasting is pretty popular. Um, what do you guys, what are your, what's your take on fasting? Like intermittent fasting? Any of it, intermittent. I don't think he ate for four days on the show. Oh, God. Sounds Why? Awful. The dude swam in 37 degree <laughs> Arctic Ocean. So <laughs> eating, not eating for four days is not Well, I not do, the worst like, thing I know that there's some religious practices out there that involve fasting. Right. Um, yeah, we'll say that's different then. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Um, but you can go without eating for like a month and, and still live. Mm -hmm. So four days water. is not terrible. But we're talking about in terms of health benefits and does it actually do anything? What do you guys think? For four days? I think it depends. Like in four the case of intermittent, intermittent fasting, like people are like, oh, I lost weight. And I'm like, because you're, it's a, t it's, it's time restricted feeding. Right. Yeah. That's all it is. Yeah. For those you're who don't know. You're just taking in less calories over a shorter period of time. Like it's not some magic 
trick at all. Magic. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. And it doesn't boost your metabolism. Like somebody had said that their doctor told them that. You can't, like, literally the only way to boost your metabolism is to become fitter. My my response is the same response that I had to you. Is like, what does that mean? Like, what are you boosting? Like, give me, give me something. Well, you my brain goes to like basal metabolic rate. Yeah, burning more calories at rest. But that's sure. And I'll, again, I'll take the that. only way to change that is to become fitter. Yeah. So if somebody more says muscle mass, you boost mm-hmm. your metabolism, meaning that you utilize more energy throughout the day. Um, then I'm yes. like, okay, an intermittent great. fasting does not do that. How, how no, there's any you, kind of fasting. It's just restricted that? caloric intake. That's all it is. And if that's the person's goal and it's done healthily then it, no then, then sure, that's fine yeah. yes yeah. it's not right like I, like i've seen people do intermittent fasting and they, they just they eat from like 8 a.m to 8 p.m and that's it or, or right. an 11, eight hour window or 12 hour or window right. whatever like that's fine um as long as you're taking in you know enough calories but like Mm-hmm. If you're losing weight on that and that works for you and it doesn't disrupt your quality of life, then great. Go for it. Right. I do it like not on purpose. I just don't eat <laughs> in the mornings. Um, <laughs> I mean, I get to a certain point in the night where I'm like, okay, yeah, like no more. Oh, yeah. Like, I'm not going to eat oh, anything else. But, I do like, that. Three hours before bed. I try. Our mm-hmm. whoop experiment, mm-hmm. every time I would eat past eight o'clock, let's mm-hmm. say, or, or close to bedtime, my recovery would be less. Um, so that's an well, instance where it's yeah, cool to experiment they say like to that. not eat within three hours of And I told bedtime. you that we learned at that um, neuroscience course that I went to that um, when you eat late, it spikes your insulin, mm-hmm. which um, also spikes your cortisol. And then that's why you're having trouble sleeping throughout the night because you have a, both a, a spike or a spike in cortisol, your stress hormone. Um, so it's just interesting that all that played out yeah. at that time. Yeah. And it gets you hungrier faster. You know, like do you ever have those moments where you're like laying in bed and can't fall asleep and then your st- stomach starts rumbling, like you get hungrier. And that's usually happens because of the insulin spike too. Cause your body then goes like, Oh, you had more sugar and then the sugar's gone. You're like, you're hungry, but you're not really hungry. It's mm. just because you're, <clears throat> your sugar's. So I keep a fun dip right at my bedside. <laughs> <laughs> Grab that sugar stick. <laughs> I don't want to well, hear about he your just personal dips life. His finger in. <laughs> I'm sorry, what? <laughs> I said sometimes he just dips his finger in. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry, what? Because <laughs> you usually eat the sugar stick first and then, yeah. you're, then you're left with a bunch of sugar powder. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> Okay. I think next week we'll, let's let's get some fun dips. Yeah. And we'll, do they we'll still try. Sell you two that? are fun dips. <laughs> <laughs> Dippin' dots. That's what you two are. Those are good too. Oh, okay. I did that one to myself. Yeah. Dippin' dots are really good. They are good. They're, the they're like little ice cream dots. I, they're the best uh, when you have it in your hand for like a couple minutes and the outer edge. <laughs> M- melts. That's unsanitary. <laughs> no, not in your hand. No, it, but, in the cup. In the cup. Yeah. And then what? It, it melts a little why bit. Do I, why do and, I? Why the, am the I asking Bob questions? No, I don't want to so know. Good. I don't want to know. <laughs> Man, you have definitely had dip and dots. I, I've had I've had dip and dots because they they saw them at like baseball games and mm-hmm. football games. Yeah, it's like ice cream, but in yeah, the little kids balls. Like those. You guys want to hear a sad story before we go? Sure. Okay. Um, I was twelve. <laughs> <laughs> That's so sad. <laughs> we were at a. Um, a baseball game, a minor league game, and I had Heelys on. Little you know, wheel shoes? Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. I was the coolest kid in the stadium. And I had, I went to- Was this to in the, Michigan? Yes. Okay. It was a, a White Caps game. Lan- no, not Lansing. West West Michigan White Caps. Were you and, the only kid in the stadium? No. Uh, our baseball team was there for like a fundraiser type of thing. Um, we were raising money for Cooperstown tournament. Hmm. Um, anyway- the Cooperstown tournament was coming up soon. So I went to the um, concession stand and I got a tray of like a hot dog, a drink, and Dippin' Dots. And the Dippin' Dots was in a um, a batting helmet, you know, those little souvenir mm-hmm. batting helmet things. Yeah. So I was so excited. I had my food and I was on my Heelys and I'm Heelying down the... <laughs> Heelying down? Heelying down the little incline going back to my seat or wherever I was. And something uh, somehow I fell. Oh. I don't know if I slipped, but... Um, mm-hmm. Tray goes everywhere. Dippin' Dots fly. I land on my elbow and have to get stitches. And Eesh. my coach was so mad because the Cooperstown tournament that we've been fundraising for, it's this giant tournament um, in New York, and they were worried that I wasn't going to be able to play because it was my throwing arm. Um, but it was fine. It all worked out. But Minus the Dippin' Dots? Uh, yeah. Sad story. I lost my Dippin' Dots hmm. and got stitches. 
Yeah, I've never gotten your dipping dots back since. You've had a hard life, Corey. That is hard. <laughs> Self inflicted. <laughs> Self inflicted Michigan wounds. I should, I should get some Heelys again. No, you should not. You have a scooter. That's I'm true. waiting like for a... him to come in here with like a freaking hoverboard. He's I got tried a one before. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's like an, a roided up hoverboard. <laughs> Um, finishing out with the fasting, I, I think one, you have to clarify, are you experimenting or are you implementing? Right? I think people, there's nothing wrong with experimenting. Yeah. If you want to try different things, see how it affects your body by all means. But if you're using it to implement into changing your routine or life or, um, supplementing, I think that's very, very tough and misguided way to go about it because you're not objectively tracking anything, nor are you seeing if it's actually doing anything. Um, to me, it's like food wise is we talk about it as fuel and it, it has to meet a certain demand or need. Like if I, I know I have a busy day of meetings or presentation or something that's going to require percentage more brain power, I'm going to eat more, not less, because the more this is also proven that the more the harder um, cognitive day you have, mm -hmm. the more calories you need to feed that because the brain takes a about 25% of daily calories to fuel. So if you have X percent more work that you need to do, you typically have to fuel that to get rid of cognitive fog. Um, on days, like typically on Fridays, I do the same thing. I typically don't eat for half a day or that's my kind of daily or weekly intermittent fasting. And it gives me an opportunity to, for my system, I feel much better and clearer to start the end of the week. Um, so I th th think you just need a strategy and, and a way to kind of track it and have a purpose for it. Um, and also figuring out whether you're experimenting or this is part of an implementation plan for, for your life. Yeah. I mean, I think it's always comes down to what's going to work best for you. So test things out. Skittles and sugar. I was going to say, no, <laughs> no, we're not testing out candies. <laughs> All right. Well, let us know what your favorite candy is and um, leave a comment below if any of these candies made sense to you. Um, by all means, whatever whatever works for you. Um, but let us know. Have you have you tried uh, fasting or cold submersion? I'm not immersion, even going to say fun dip. <laughs> or, or fun dip. Again, whatever that means to you. Um, saunas as well obviously the opposite mm -hmm. of cold you it's have hot saunas that, yeah. that people really like um do you do those regularly do you try those do you feel like they have a health benefit are you tracking it in any way if you're saying yes they have a health benefit let us know you can leave a comment below if you're watching on youtube or uh, leave a message on one of our podcast sites like apple podcast or amazon or audible whatever wherever you're listening as well as you can always shoot us an email, head rechargexfit.com or follow along on Instagram at rechargexfit. And of course, if you haven't subscribed yet on YouTube, go ahead and subscribe for a chance to win one of those Time PS5s. Running out. Time is running out. Pretty sure just, we're just going to plug it in here if nobody, if we don't get to 5K subscribers. No. Just play it. No. No. No, we won't do that. We will not do that. All right. Thanks for tuning in to the latest episode of the Movement is Medicine podcast. We'll catch you again live from Recharge.